Welcome back, fifth graders. You're in week seven. It's Tuesday, and we are back to social studies. Uh, today, we are still learning about the Puritans, and we're going to learn a little bit about the schools that were in the New England colonies at the time. But before we do that, um, in this lesson, there's a primary source document. So think about it to yourself a minute. What do you think that means? What could that mean, a primary source document? So go ahead and push pause. Take a little note about this, think what you, make a prediction, and then we're gonna talk about it. Okay, primary source document. When we're learning about history, um, primary source documents are how we learn about stories from the past in a firsthand account. They're original records of historical periods or events made by people during an event. Uh, these sources give you firsthand or eyewitness information about things that happened in the past because the authors weren't were actually there. So some examples of primary source documents are like diaries, journals, letters. Think to yourself, have you heard of any primary source documents that we study or look at or learn from? Hmm. Also images and photographs taken from a time period can give you information and other historical documents like birth certificates, military records, uh, the Constitution of the United States of America is another example. So today there's a primary source document in your reading assignment uh, that you're going to use to help understand a little bit more about what schools were like during uh, the New England in, to, during the time period when people were living in the New England colonies in the 1700s. Okay, so let's take a look at your reading assignment today. All right, New England schools. Reading the Bible and learning about Christianity were of the highest importance to citizens of the New England colonies. Children were taught to read and write as soon as they were ready. In New England towns with more than 50 families, elementary schools were operated by the town. Boys and girls attended these schools to learn basic reading, writing, arithmetic, and religion. In New England towns with more than 100 families, grammar schools were started and, started and run by the town. The purpose of a grammar school was to teach boys to read Latin, do arithmetic, and learn other things that were needed to enter college. Girls were not permitted to attend grammar schools. Not all boys attended the grammar schools because many families preferred for their sons to learn a trade. Boys studied with their fathers to learn the family trade, or they began an apprenticeship to learn a trade from a master artisan. Girls generally worked with their mothers at home until they were married and began their own families. So here's your primary source document. This is a page of the illustrated alphabet from the New England Primer, 1721, letters A through F. The New England Primer was one of the very first school books used in the New England colonies. This is one page of the primer. So take a look closely. Um, here is how they saw the alphabet, how they learned the alphabet. Um, during that, during school in that time. This is one of the documents, one of the books that they, that they learned from. Okay, so your assignment today is to use the text and the primary source document to compare and contrast New England schools with your experience of what school is like today. So what similarities do you think there were? And then what were some of the differences of the, the time period from New England schools and schools today? So if you can come up with uh, three or four similarities and three or four differences, that would be great. Uh, do your best. Okay. Have a great day, fifth graders. You're doing great. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow.